Net neutrality is also getting support from religious groups like the Christian Coalition. The Christian Coalition? Among the Coalition's 2010 agenda, prevent discrimination on the Internet by passing net neutrality. This is Marxism. The group Free Press is also pushing the net neutrality agenda through events like faith-based community organizing and media reform. Isn't that great? Hey, ACLU, where are you on this one? I mean, I thought you were an organization that believed that kids, yeah, they've got to be protected against those evil Christmas carols in school at the solstice performance. And that civilization, oh, the Ten Commandments, my good kids, close your eyes as the Ten Commandments. If you see the Ten Commandments in a courtroom, panic, everybody. But merging the EPA and faith for the ACLU, that you're fine with that. It's almost like you're a sham organization, isn't it? This is the perfect program for the ACLU. Replacing God with government. Replacing the creator with the created. Do we have, who was that, that, um, who is it, uh, Harkin, that we um, play? Do you have it, Tiffany? Okay, I asked for before the show. Tom Harkin, the night before Christmas, said this, and man, they ripped me apart when I pointed it out. Here it is. As our leader said earlier, we take that step from health care as a privilege to health care as an inalienable right of every single American citizen. Okay. He went on to talk about how Congress creates rights. Congress does not create rights. They create messes. They create problems. They create programs, but not rights. God creates rights. Isn't it interesting that we now have the church and government merging and Nancy Pelosi telling the church you gotta tell people this is the gospel the environmental justice uh, program and in, in, inside of religion is so powerful that now one of the leaders of the movement one of its high priest has admitted that what they're jamming down our throats won't even solve the problem of global warming I hope you all realize that you could eliminate every power plant in America today, and you could stop every car in America. Take out the entire power generation sector, take out all of the transportation sector, and you still wouldn't be anywhere near 80% below 1990 levels. You'd be closer to 60%, you'd be at around 68%, and that's bringing the economy to a complete halt, basically. So then why are we doing it? Al Gore has admitted that CO2 doesn't even necessarily drive temperature up. Wait a minute. Wasn't that the basis of his entire argument for global warming? Watch this. The temperature goes up before the sea sometimes that's, goes up. Sometimes that has been true in the past. The opposite has also been true in the past. <laughs> that's kind of an inconvenient truth that you should have put in your movie, The Inconvenient Truth. Jeez. What we have to remember now, this is not about the truth. It's not about the truth at all. It's not about saving the planet. It is about redistribution of wealth. Please understand this. Our, in the progressive movement, they knew that we were God-centered people, that we had morals. We used to solve problems through charity. Got it? Well, that's not good if you're a Marxist. God, moral, global warming, environmental justice, that doesn't really work. Why don't we just solve it through charity? We gotta take that apart. But read these the other way. God, morals, the border. Social justice leads to socialism, redistribution of wealth. Read it the other way. If you're a Marxist, you can't sell redistribution of wealth or socialism to people, but maybe social justice, but you need a good excuse, the border. It's your moral duty. God is telling you to do it. Do you see? It's a perversion. They use it to fundamentally transform America. It started back in the 1900s. Just as environmental justice has nothing to do with saving the environment, social justice has nothing to do with justice or the Bible or God. None of it. I'll give you the history here in a second. The White House Faith-Based Council's report came out. I was being attacked on the Internet. Why doesn't Glenn Beck practice what he preaches? That's what it was. Why doesn't Glenn Beck practice what he preaches? They went to Acts. Here it is. Acts 2, 44, 45. 
and all that believed were together and all and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need oh i didn't know the apostles were all communists do you notice notice anything put that back up on the screen do you notice anything missing here notice anything anything how about the word government or force or taxes they didn't have their possessions taxed and confiscated by Rome and then redistributed to the poor. They chose to give all of their goods. You see, it's all about the heart. It's all about changing the heart. God or government. Government takes it. God changes your heart. Now, I can't wonder, I can't but help wonder if that, if that guy who posted that scripture has parted with all of his goods. Have you? Have you? Maybe you have, except your computer. But I'd be willing to compare my contributions to the poor to yours, sir. I have compared them to the president. I've compared them to Joe Biden. And I mean an equal percentage. Yeah. I knock them in the dirt. Why is that? Oh, I know. Because my heart tells me to do it. Their heart says, take it from someone else. In the beginning, I, I explained that social justice as presented by many of these people on the left is code for Marxism. Who was it that attacked me from the beginning on this, the moment I said this? Jim Wallace. Here he is, an advisor to the president, uh, advisor on politics and uh, faith, in his own words. Are you then calling for the redistribution of wealth in society? Absolutely, without any hesitation. That's what the gospel is all about. I get a call one day from a priest, and uh, Dorothy Day's in town, opening a Catholic worker house on Kenmore, up on the north side. She wants to meet you. Do you have time? Do I have time? Right. We had one community car, was always broken. <laughs> and so I ran, you know, 20 blocks, and I'm in the parlor of the Catholic worker, and in walks the great lady. Dorothy uh, wrote a book about her life called Love is the Measure, but she wasn't ever soft, very tough. So, you're a radical student like me, right? Yeah. You were a Marxist like me, right? Yeah. Got it? That's who these people are. They can hide behind the cloth all they want. But they don't know the difference. Actually, he does. He just denies it. He doesn't know the difference between individual salvation he doesn't know the difference between individual redemption, individual justice, and collective. They need it to be collective. Marxists always do. That's why they've been so vicious and relentless in trying to discredit and destroy me or anybody who says these things. Will you get a piece of paper and pencil? Because they can't have the American people understand what they're doing with this social justice and EPA faith office. It is a radical perversion of the gospel, and you will see why this hour. It's why you're hearing nothing from the far-left lunatic fringe. Mr. President, why is it? You're not hearing that now, are you? Nothing about the separation of church and state, because they know this isn't about God. They know this is going to put the final nail in the coffin of our churches. It is about control and the fundamental transformation of America. Look, I am telling you this because nothing is as it seems. A jobs bill is not a jobs bill, really. It's a stimulus bill, which is just graft. You need to know the truth, and they always change the language. You need to know the truth and then make your own decisions. Look, I'll show you the roots of social justice. We'll get the truth from a couple of huge experts here in America. What social justice is, what the history is, and what must be done to restore. What must be done to restore the Constitution? We're working on it. The love for the founders. Know who these people were. And church, why have you stopped going to church? Why? Why? Because it doesn't mean anything anymore. It's time for our church, it's time for our priests, our pastors, our bishops to stand up for the individual rights. It's individual salvation. We're not, the Lord doesn't call us up. Review, review our salvation. Go, okay, hang on just a second. Uh, now serving group number 10. It's individual. Your church is either for socialist government 
or the living of the gospel. It is either about God or government. Tonight, you're going to find out which is which. Back in a minute. Net neutrality is also getting support from religious groups like the Christian Coalition. The Christian Coalition? Among the Coalition's 2010 agenda, prevent discrimination on the Internet by passing net neutrality. This is Marxism. The group Free Press is also pushing the net neutrality agenda through events like faith-based community organ. Take that step from health care as a privilege to health care as an inalienable right of every single American citizen. Okay. He went on to talk about how Congress creates rights. Congress does not create rights. They create messes. They create problems. They create programs, but not rights. God creating and media reform. Isn't that great? Hey, ACLU, where are you on this one? I mean, I thought you were an organization that believe that kids, yeah, they've got to be protected against those evil Christmas carols in school at the solstice performance. And that civilization, oh God, the Ten Commandments with government, replacing the creator with the created. Do we have, who was that, that, um, who is it, uh, Harkin, that we um, play? Do you have it, Tiffany? Okay, I asked for before the show, Tom Harkin, the night before Christmas said this, and man, they ripped me apart when I pointed it out. Here it is. As our leader said earlier, we... It's my good. Kids, close your eyes as the Ten Commandments. If you see the Ten Commandments in a courtroom, panic, everybody. But merging the EPA and faith for the ACLU, that you're fine with that. <laughs> it's almost like you're a sham organization, isn't it? This is the perfect program for the ACLU. Replacing God 